I don't know if I've ever felt this way about a team before. Um, I don't know if I've ever wanted something more for a team. When any one of us uh, wanted to get into team sports, it, it was to be around a team like this. Um, we went through so much together in just a few months and really got to know each other. Um, and through everything, we, we've made each other better. Uh, and it was, it was such an honor to be around a group like this. Uh, you know, it really was. I, I wish I had something for this team just to, to keep this thing going. Uh, I think the hardest thing for any of us to wrap our minds around uh, is that we don't have practice tomorrow at 12. Um, it, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like the basketball gods <laughs> um, shine down on us. Um, I think probably our group wants to be in there, uh, arguably as, as, as much as any other, as much as any team uh, in the playoffs. Um, it's just, uh, it's just a, a, an extremely tough uh, thing to, to wrap our minds around uh, right now. This was, uh, this was a great group, and everything that we went through together brought, brought it out. Um, it was the most vulnerable group I've, I've been around. Um, and you know, there's just it, it was it was it's basketball, but uh, it really became you know a, a family and it became a, a group that really cared and, and loved loved each other, and we weren't afraid to tell each other that. Eric, when was the point where you realized that you might actually get to 500 and it wouldn't be enough? And how hard is it to wrap your mind around that, that a team can go 30 and 11 over the second half of the season and yet the door might not be open for you? Uh, it never really crossed my mind. You know, we believe in magic. We believe in karma. <laughs> we believe in uh, those things you can't define. Um, and we just thought we would have the momentum. Uh, by no means did we think we were a perfect team, but uh, we thought that uh, we had the the energy and the momentum going in the right direction that we would find a way. We we continued to find a way against against the odds, against um, any kind of prognostication against us. Uh, just very stubborn, bullheaded. Um, we never set a goal to be 500, um, so we never talked about that, but. You know, looking back on it, if you told me that we could be 500, you know, at any point um, during this season, I, I, you would think that that would be good enough to get to get in the playoffs. Eric, you're obviously uh, understandably emotional, but did you get a chance to address the team or talk to the team, and how yeah. are they doing after obviously knowing that it's not yeah, going their way? None of us are handling it well right now. Um, now, if we... Uh, everybody uh, probably wants nothing more than just be able to come in here tomorrow and start preparing for the playoffs. Um, you know, we, we've been in our March Madness, our playoffs, for several weeks. Uh, so we're geared up, wired up. I mean, this feels like uh, a loss in the finals. The way we've been going for the last three months, that's what that's what how emotional uh, it is in the locker room. It, it's one of the most unique experiences I've ever been around uh, to be able to... Uh, come together literally as strangers. That, that was the biggest thing we were thinking about and planning for as a staff coming out of training camp was how we were going to get uh, a bunch of strangers, uh, guys on um, uh, free agent contract years, um, guys with every reason not to buy into a team, um, and a lot of departures. Um, from people that knew what our culture is about. How are we going to get a group together uh, that would really uh, care about each other and and play for each other? Um, I mean, this, this season feels like three or four seasons wrapped in one, uh, and it feels like we've been in the playoffs. How I feel and how I've felt and how the players feel, um, 
emotionally, it's very similar uh, to how you'd feel getting knocked out uh, in the finals. Um, just because of how hard and emotionally invested we've been, um, particularly the last, uh, the last three months. Smo back here. I know that this is still raw, the pain, and but will there come a time when you can step back and appreciate just this second half and, and all this team accomplished? No, there's no question. I, I, uh, I gained so much from this team. You know, I, I feel so grateful uh, to be um, in this profession long enough to be able to coach a team like this. And. You're going to hopefully have opportunities to coach a, a lot of different teams. Um, but I, I feel like uh, a lot of uh, everything that we've been through um, here at the Heat uh, prepared us to be able to coach a team like this. Um, and to be, uh, to be around uh, a team like that is very humbling and, and I was honored to be around. I, I, we gained as much or more from them than they did from, from us. Uh, it really was a symbiotic relationship, uh, and that's why it was so beautiful, uh, and it was a, you know incredible thing to be a part of. Uh, Eric, we saw the big billboard culture. We saw the staff wearing the culture, and you spoke about it. What did this season say about the Heat culture? It says, you know, I mean, we believe in, in the culture, but look, it says a whole lot about those individuals in that locker room and their makeup. Um, and their willingness to put their chips in, all chips in, to be a part of a team and, and see if, uh, if they could help um, make a team better. Um, you know, there's a, a bunch of uh, disparate uh, parts <laughs> that came together, um, you know, and, uh, and uh, the final result, uh, you know, was much better uh, for all of us, just being a part of it, and everybody being able to uh, to highlight and and uh, compliment the next guy, um, you know, it was, it was a great thing, uh, great thing to see. But uh, you know, the the individual character and fortitude of of the guys in that locker room that's what stands out to me. Um, you know, especially the guys that have bounced around and uh, been in different places. Um, you build up some some grit uh, doing that. Everybody had a story in that locker room uh, about how they got to here, and we feel that everything always happens for a reason, that we're all here this season for a reason. Um, and that's why it just feels so off right now. It feels like, you know, we could do some damage, you know, in, in that postseason. feel like we could be playing for a while, um, but we just weren't given that opportunity. And, you know, we we're so different in that second half, um, you know, if we were able to play, you know, Chicago um, at any point later in the season, you know, then uh, rather than those first two times, then, you know, maybe we would have had the, the tiebreaker there. Eric, did you get any score updates on Indiana and Chicago? No, during your uh, it's probably the most heightened sense of awareness I've ever had with a basketball team. We made a... A covenant with each other um, that once we left the locker room, put our phones aside, we wouldn't ask anybody, wouldn't look. Uh, the guys that would, uh, Justice and Dion couldn't tell us any updates. We they, we didn't want them looking at the phones. Um, uh, obviously, it wasn't out there uh, for anybody to see. Um, I was very conscious of not looking over the scores table to see uh, Mickey and and Nick to see what their facial expressions were. Uh, it was, you know, it's where we should all be more often. The way technology is right now, uh, we're all over the place. Uh, but to see in this day and age and the millennial um, generation, uh, for two and a half hours, none of us looked at our uh, devices. It was absolutely pure, just in the moment, heightened sense of awareness. Um, I wish we could tap into that way more often. Eric, when did you know that there was something different about this group? I mean, I know, you, I know you said that. I know you said there was never an aha yeah, moment. Yeah, I mean, but... there weren't aha moments, but when we got drilled um, by the Lakers, uh, the next day we had uh, one of the best practices of the year, uh, and it would have been a perfect time um, for guys to um, start to bail on each other. 
Uh, it would have been an easy time. The, the narrative was already starting to get out there that maybe this is a team that, that should be tanking, um, that there's no way to, to salvage the season, that you're either, <laughs> you're either tanking or um, you're just you're not playing it the right way. Um, and the next day, uh, we had a, a, a heated practice, uh, but guys were saying the right things um, in practice. Uh, about trying to make each other better, um, about just getting better that day. And I thought when we had a, um, a 12 o'clock game against the Clippers the next day, we had a, a great character game, really connected. Um, we played a good bas basketball game. We ended up getting beat, but uh, it was a, a Sunday game. Um, and the rest of the road trip, they continued like that. Um, the sessions that we had, we just started to get closer. Um, you, you really start to get to know people when things aren't going your way. You now, really, that's that's the truth of it. And we started to really see what every guy was made of. And I loved seeing the the character of guys in that locker room when they're pushed against the wall. Um, and most guys would. Uh, you know, start to bail, and that's where you know the term they use it all the time. They, you know, they, we come from the jungle, meaning guys had come from the D League, guys had come from getting the door shut on them, guys had uh, um, failed, um, but kept persevering and developing a, a grit and a character, uh, and that was starting to get revealed uh, to each other, and guys were starting to mention it. Um, about how much they admired another guy's character and, and fortitude. Uh, it was just a very, very cool thing. And, and um, when we came back from that road trip, uh, had two training camp practices, and it just took off from there. Eric, you, at the beginning of the game, you don't us thank the fans. You put him in at the end of the game. Is that kind of thanking him for the opportunity, uh, the leadership he? I wish I could have done more. I mean, that, that's a, a nothing gesture. <laughs> that uh, it doesn't reflect how much I, I care and love for UD. Now, really, um, I love UD. Uh, how else can I say it? Um, no, he's he's the last one. <laughs> Uh, the last samurai from the championship years, and and um, he em embodied. Uh, he always does embody everything that we want from a Miami Heat player. You know, I've said it time and time again. You, you want to see what a Miami Heat player is. You, you look at a picture of UD. You watch him uh, in action every day. His preparation, his professionalism. Um, his character, you'll find out what we want out of a Miami Heat player. Uh, but then to continue to reinvent himself uh, and the selfless leadership that he had this year, uh, just giving to the team. And he was strongest when we were all weakest <laughs> on that road trip. Uh, that's when you heard his voice the most. Um, and the guys really responded uh, to that leadership. Um, and it was uh, it's a really cool evolution to see. Uh, from an absolute force of nature, warrior that did everything on the court, and it was so quiet. Um, you know, his first two or three years, it was just all on the court, lead by his intensity. But he wouldn't say much uh, to anybody. To now, um, you know, having three championship rings uh, and being the voice uh, in the locker room, um, that's one of my great joys in, in all of coaching is to see that evolution of a champion.